Governor Herbert's FY 2016 budget proposal calls for taxing e-cigarette products like regular tobacco products. The position has generated a little bit of chatter here on Capitol Hill, including uh, the health impacts of e-cigarettes, the way they're marketed to young people, and their role in helping people quit smoking. So we're bringing in an expert to help us understand exactly what the governor's position is and why that's his position. It's Dr. David Patton joining us today. He's the executive director of the Utah Department of Health uh, and an expert in all things e-cigarette for today. So, uh, Dr. Patton, thanks for taking some time. Thank you very much, Mark. So, first of all, you've brought some visual aids with you. Let's talk about uh, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about an e-cigarette or e-cigarette products. Very good. There's actually two components to the product, right? The one component, like this, which is uh, a very fancy, shiny sort of an instrument. Mm -hmm. Looks like a lightsaber. Yeah. Just <laughs> is an electronic uh, nicotine delivery device. Okay, and we refer to them in that sense. They come in all different shapes and sizes you can see here. Some are shinier, others look exactly like a cigarette uh -huh. that you might use uh, with a regular tobacco product. So these kind of devices are available uh, quite broadly right now, convenience stores and smoke shops. Are there age limits on who can buy those? In Utah there is, in most states there isn't. In, in Utah we implemented last year a law that requires that you can't sell to minors. Uh -huh. So 18 and under are not allowed to purchase these products. Now the other component to these are the, um, the juice as it's referred to or the nicotine product. And they come in all sorts of varieties as you can see here, many different flavors. Many of them have children sort of an emphasis. Some of the ones that I'm more interested in here, for instance, English toffee mm -hmm. would be one that might interest uh, a child or an adult. Uh, Smarties is another one. Smarties are uh, a, a favorite candy of children and they could easily be uh, confused to think that's something that just tastes like Smarties. S'mores is another one here, for instance. We have uh, cotton candy, gummy bear, all sorts mm -hmm. of different flavors that uh, could be attractive to any, any age. So from a health perspective, I think we, we start out when you, when you hear about uh, electronic cigarettes, that these are somehow better than regular cigarettes, better uh, from a health perspective. Is that the case? Is there evidence to support that? Well, that's the, that's the very interesting issue is evidence. None of these products are FDA approved. And so the research on these products is very limited. We do have some studies that have looked at this and we find that some people think that they're better and certainly in a cigarette you have burned tobacco products and so you have a lot of carcinogens. Mm -hmm. But we also know that these products have direct nicotine in them. We also know they contain lead and formaldehyde. We know that formaldehyde can be a carcinogen as well. And uh, nicotine is a neurotoxin as well as highly addictive drug. So when we're talking about these, you often hear the term that vaping, that it's just water vapor. Right. But you're telling me that because of the products that the, that's delivering the nicotine, that it's, it's more than just water vapor and there are a number of chemicals in it that could, should be of some concern. That's right. This is a direct nicotine delivery device. And so it's nicotine going directly into your lung. Mm -hmm. And even the vapor that you exhale does, isn't just water vapor. It contains excess nicotine. It contains other products like formaldehyde that can be mm -hmm. ingested by others. And some of the popularity uh, of these products is due to the fact that people assume this is helping people quit smoking. That A, it's better than, t than using tobacco products, uh, and then B, that it's helping them with their cessation efforts when it comes to using tobacco. Is that uh, supported by the data that people are actually using these products uh, to quit using tobacco and are slowly weaning themselves off or completely replacing? How do those numbers stack up? Well, we know that a lot of people who buy these products think that they're using it to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. But the evidence shows that the smoking rates in adults has not changed at all, while the, while the use of e-cigarettes has gone up tremendously. Mm -hmm. And so we don't see the evidence that it's used or being effective as a cessation device. We do have a lot of uh, cessation devices that are FDA approved, and all these products could be submitted to the FDA for that kind of purpose but none of them have sought to mm -hmm. see that kind of cessation approval. Okay, so that's talking about stopping smoking. What about uh, kids who are maybe trying it? Are these, uh, is there any evidence to show that uh, kids are using these, uh, thinking that they're better than tobacco cigarettes, and then it's maybe introducing them to the world of smoking and moving them to that, or that they're, that they're trying something that they wouldn't otherwise try if the only option were tobacco cigarettes? Right, uh, e-cigarette use among um, young people has mm. tripled since 2011. Mm. So it's gone up tremendously. In high schools where a lot of these products have been confiscated from students, many of them say, well, I don't think this is smoking. This is not like using tobacco. Whereas it's a direct derivative of tobacco product nicotine, mm -hmm. right? 
And so uh, a lot of kids are using these products thinking it's not tobacco. Some are thinking it's not as bad as tobacco. Uh, but we know that most people who use these products start getting a nicotine habit and they will use other nicotine products to satisfy that habit including tobacco products. And that's in a way because we've always talked about tobacco being the, the drug that you don't want, but it's really the chemicals. Tobacco is sort of the delivery agent, even in a tobacco cigarette, that it's, it's what gets you the nicotine. So this is just cutting out that middleman and giving you some other form of the nicotine. Is right. that essentially correct? There is no synthetic nicotine. Nicotine comes from tobacco. Mm -hmm. And so the tobacco that goes into cigarettes and the nicotine there is the same as the nicotine in these products. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about marketing because uh, in order for people to know about these products uh, they generally have to, to hear about them somehow in the marketplace. Uh, you, you've mentioned some of these flavors. How are they being marketed? Are they, is this being directed at uh, primarily at current smokers as a way of uh, weaning oneself off of, of smoking or is, uh, are, are they directed at kids and trying to get new people introduced to, uh, to nicotine? Well, there's probably not one direction in marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, the TV commercials I've seen seem to look at the macho man like we used to have cigarette mm -hmm. advertising. The Marlboro Man. The Marlboro Man yeah. kind of a thing. And, and I see similar kind of advertising for e-cigarettes. On the other hand, the flavors, I think, indicate where marketing is going as well. And there aren't probably a lot of adults that want Smarties as a flavor, mm -hmm. but that's a child-focused or a kid-focused uh, marketing plan. Gummy bears is another one I don't think most adults would be interested in, yet it's going towards uh, the kind of flavors that are available here. So we are hearing about kids who would not necessarily have ever tried smoking, that, that somehow that's taboo in their mind, but that this is somehow acceptable. Right. 30% of the, of the kids that we have surveyed said that they've never tried a tobacco product, but when asked if they've tried e-cigarettes, they say yes. Mm -hmm. And it's just because they don't consider it to be the same thing. They don't think it's the same. Uh, but the drugs, uh, the chemicals in it actually don't support right. that. Uh, so the governor has essentially proposed taxing these products uh, just like you would a pack of cigarettes. Right. Um, at, at, at essentially treating them the same. Uh, What's the purpose behind that? If you can just walk us through from a health perspective, uh, it, it, obviously there's a revenue element to that, and, uh, but, but from a health perspective, what's the benefit of taxing them similar to tobacco products? We have in our department um, a tobacco cessation program, and we have a lot of different methods to try to help people quit smoking. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we have found to be the most effective means of quitting smoking is to impose a tax mm -hmm. on that product. We find that about a 10% increase in the tax will result in about a 5% decrease in usage. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that if these products are taxed the same way that other tobacco products are taxed, we will see a decrease in that usage. It, it basically makes it less available to individuals who mm -hmm. don't want to buy that product if the price is too high. Mm -hmm. So it's a disincentive, but it's also a matter of helping people understand what they're really getting when they purchase something like this so that they're not operating sort of in ignorance thinking, well, this is a healthier option. That's right. One of these products here, uh, our people went out and bought some of these as samples. It cost $1 to buy the delivery device for this nicotine delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not going to disincentivize somebody from buying the product. If we can tax it to the point where it becomes something they have to think about, that might be a different story. Mm -hmm. And we're working with the legislature, obviously, to, to find the best way or the best level uh, to tax these products, the delivery system and, uh, and the, and the, the liquid as well. Yeah. yeah, they call it juice, and it's, it's a mixture of that nicotine to uh, chemical. Right. So you, you look at look at opportunities uh, or, or um, the the issue of taxing either one of those or both. Either one or both. That's yeah. correct. So, and and the way I've thought about this with other people is you know it's, think of it as e-books. Right. You're taxing the Kindle device or the the book that you download. One's refillable. One's kind of ongoing. Uh, That's and so right. So and a lot of times you see these products uh, at reduced prices, so that they can sell more of them content that would go into them. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dr. David Patton, the Executive Director of the Utah Department of Health, thanks very much for taking some time to help us know more about this. And you'll be working with legislators to make sure they understand as well. That's right. All Thank right. You if you want more information, you can find it on the governor's blog at governor.utah.gov.